Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this uh, video, I am discussing uh, the learn my learnings from Middle Discourses 95. This is with Kanki, also known as the Kanki Sutta. This is an important sutta in the uh, Pali teachings and uh, merits, merits uh, uh, review, uh, a thorough kind of a learning. So the link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can also download this particular sutta, read it at your end and get the insights. Right. So the, the, the context of this discourse is that Buddha was wandering in the land of the Kosalans. At that time there was a Brahmin Kanki who was living at, at that particular in that particular area. And there were other Brahmins, lot of Brahmins were there, uh, Brahmins and householders who were going to see the Buddha. And uh, Kanki came to know about that the fully realized one has come. So he said, I will also join uh, uh, you to meet the Buddha. The Brahmins said, the 500 Brahmins that they were saying, uh, that were there, they said, no, no, please, you don't come. Uh, actually, you are very learned. He was very learned. Kanki was very learned. So he said, uh, basically, they said that Buddha should come. Buddha should come and uh, and meet you. And they gave their reasons that you are rich, affluent, you have mastered all the Vedas, and you are good looking and you are ethical, mature in conduct. Uh, so for these reasons, it is not appropriate to go to go for you to go to the meet the Buddha. The Buddha should come and meet you. And then he said, no, you are wrong. I am listing out many, many reasons why I should go to the Buddha and Buddha was, would, should not come. And then he said a lot of things like he is very, very learned. He left his full, uh, the abundant, rich life for this reason of seeking the truth. And a uh, lot of things. He, he is a teacher of teachers. He has ended sensual desire. He teaches the efficacy of deeds and action. He doesn't wish any harm upon the community of Brahmins. He went from, from an eminent family of unbroken aristocratic lineage. Right? So all these things he said. He has the 32 marks of the great man that we understood in the previous suttas. Right? He has all the 32 marks of a great man. Various kings are his followers. Then, then one more thing he said is that he is our guest in that particular land that we are at where we are living. It is appropriate courtesy that we should go and visit the guest rather than we call the guest to visit us. And then, so he went up to the uh, Buddha. And when he was there, uh, went up to the Buddha, Buddha was conversing with some senior Brahmins on some uh, spiritual matters. And there was one of the uh, Brahmin students named Kapatika who was interrupting in between. So Buddha rebuked him that you should not speak, you should not interrupt the senior, the conversation in, of, with the senior Brahmins. So Kapatika waited. And then Kapatika, when, when Buddha got free, uh, from the discussion, Kapatika asked this question to the Buddha that uh, uh, regarding by that by which regarding that which by the lineage of the testament or by canonical authority is the ancient hymn, hymns of the Brahmins. The Brahmins come to the definite conclusion: this is the only truth. Other ideas are silly. So he says that uh, we go by our hymns and uh, uh, whatever the teachings, and accordingly we we say that this is the only truth. Other ideas are silly. So Buddha said, uh, Bhardwaja, or Kapatika's other name was Bhardwaja. Is there even a single one of the Brahmins who says, I know this, I see this, this is the only truth, these other ideas are silly. So he says, no, Master Gautama. So then basically, Master Gaut uh, so Buddha wanted to know that no one says this, no, not in your pri previous so many generations, not all your seers. They never said this particular thing that this is the only truth, other ideas are silly. So what basically he says, he said that, Buddha said, Buddha now give the cue of a, uh, 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 that there is an analogy, that there is a cue of blind man, blind men, each holding the one in front. The first one doesn't see, middle one doesn't see, last one doesn't see. In the same way, it seems to me that the Brahmin statement turns out to be like a cue of blind men. The first one does not see, middle one does not see, last one does not see. What do you think, Bharadvaja? This being so, doesn't the Brahmin's faith turn out to be baseless? So the Brahmin's basically, Buddha was pointing out that if you just... Uh, you know, kind of carry on with the teachings and you know hold the teachings just by out of faith, and then you say that only our teachings are right, other teachings. So then Buddha said, "Is this not wrong? Because someone, the first one who has done it, they themselves are not clear, and the other people are like blind men. They are following the same teaching and out of just faith, right?" So uh, Kapatika said, "The Brahmins don't just honor this because of faith, uh, but also by oral transmission. That means it has been transmitted." From centuries to centuries and that's why we uh, follow it. So Buddha said, now first you said faith or by faith. Now you speak of oral tradition. 
then Buddha said that five things can be seen or turn out in dif different ways. Five things can be seen to turn out in different ways. What five? Faith, endorsement, oral tradition, reasoned contemplation and acceptance of a view after consideration. Even if you do like not only faith but even by endorsement because like some authority has said that or oral tradition, things getting passed down from one generation to another through oral transmission or even if you reasonably re contemplate a particular teaching or even when you accept a view after consideration, all five things can be turned out to be hollow, right? Void and hollow and false, right? Uh, so Buddha says, even if you have, don't have full faith in something, it may be true and real. Even though you have strong beliefs in something, something may be accurately transmitted, something may be well contemplated, something may be well considered, it may still turn out to be void, hollow and false, right? So, so Buddha says, for a sensible person who is preserving the truth, this is not sufficient to come to a definite conclusion. So then uh, you know, uh, the, the Brahmin student asked, Master Gautama, how do you refine the preservation of truth? So this is the first thing which Buddha answered in this sutta. What, how do you define preservation of truth? Buddha says, if a person has faith, they preserve the truth by saying, such is my faith. But they don't yet come to the definite conclusion that this is only the truth, all other ideas are silly. Now, basically what the Brahmin student was making the mistake was that they are preserving the truth. They don't know the truth. They are preserving it, but they are saying that this only idea is truth. So that is where Buddha is saying this is the wrong. You preserve the truth by faith or by old transmission, but you don't say that this is the only truth. You are only preserving the truth. They don't, you don't come to a definite conclusion. So uh, the Brahmin student said, okay, Master Gautama, I understand. You have told us regarding the preservation of the truth. But how do you define the awakening to the truth? So, the, so, so Buddha, said, Buddha had said, this is how is the preservation of truth. This is not yet the awakening of the truth. So the Brahmin student said, you have defined preservation. Now please define what is the awakening of the truth. So now Buddha tells what is the awakening of the truth. Now, here Buddha says, take the case of a mendicant or a monk uh, living supported by a town or a village. Householder approaches and scrutinizes them for three kinds of things. Basically, a householder approaches a mendicant or a teacher for three things, whether he has greed, hatred, delusion, right? And they observe him, tries, tests him in different ways and finds out that the mendicant doesn't have greed, doesn't have hatred, doesn't have delusion, right? These three are uh, always Buddha has said that these are the root of all the unskillful qualities, right? Scrutinizing them in this way, they see that the mendicant is purified, of qualities that promote all these you know, greed, hatred and delusion. They pay homage, listen to the teachings, hear the teachings, remember the teachings, reflect on their meaning and accept them after consideration. Then enthusiasm springs up, they make an effort, weigh up and persevere. Persevering, they directly realize the ultimate truth and see with penetrative wisdom. This is how the awakening to the truth is defined. I describe the awakening of the truth as defined in this way, but this is not yet the arrival. So. Here Buddha is saying that the householder first finds out the mendicant and see his qualities and f makes it clear that okay he doesn't have these kind of unskillful qualities. right? That is why it's very very important for a student to test the teacher. right? And especially in the, this day and age, the Kali where we are living, it's very important to you, so you to see the teacher, whether the teacher is you know free from all these things. See, we are all we are all just you know, having our bright and dark sides, right? We Even a teacher that you find is a guide, right? Uh, it's very, very difficult in this world to find a, full, full, find a fully realized one in physical form, right? So, the point here is that they, the householder, the student tests the teacher, then they place the faith when they see that they, he doesn't have the negative qualities. But, and then they make the effort. They start making the, hearing the teacher's teachings, listening to the teachings, reflecting on the meaning, making an effort, right? And they re realize the ultimate truth, that is the awakening to the truth, but not yet the arrival of the truth. So the Brahmin student said, okay, thank you so much for telling me what is the awakening of the truth. Now please define what is the arrival of the truth. Now, Buddha says, by the cultivation, development and making more, much of the same thing, there is arrival. So one is the awakening to the truth, that means you start implementing the teachings, learning the teachings. And as a gradual process of continuing with all those things, you arrive at the truth, right? So 
see what the mistake the brahmin uh, student has done he said just out of faith they just they just have the teachings which they follow and they said we all we know the truth buddha said no it's a three step process first you preserve the teaching whereby you hold it by faith and you don't say that i have reached the conclusion that this is the truth right because you have not arrived at the truth second you awaken to the truth that means you test the teacher you have the faith you start reading the teachings right third is arriving at the truth that means you continue to have uh, you know read understand follow the teachings whereby you finally arrived at the truth right uh, then uh, then but uh, 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 but says this is the arriving of the truth i regard the arrival of the truth as defined in this way but what quality is helpful so okay so brahmin student says okay thank you so much i now understand what is arriving the truth but now what is the quality that is helpful for arriving at the truth now here this is the you know the crux of this discourse where buddha is highlighting the qualities that are helpful and all the students we are all students of the buddha we need to kind of pay attention to what buddha is saying striving is helpful for arriving at the truth if you don't strive you won't arrive so buddha is now you know point blank sharing the the fact that you cannot be lazy and be awakened right you have to make the right effort right what is the right effort letting go of your unskillful qualities doing the skillful qualities practicing generosity practicing purity of conduct practicing harmlessness so if you don't strive you won't arrive at the truth buddha is very clearly mentioning this you arrive at the truth because you strive that's why striving is helpful but what quality is helpful for striving weighing up the teachings weighing up the teachings is helpful for striving making an effort so making an effort is helpful for weighing up the teachings enthusiasm is helpful for making an effort it's like going reverse way right so striving before that it is weighing up before that it is making the effort before that it is enthusiasm before that it is acceptance of the teachings before that is the reflecting of the meanings of the teachings before that it is the remembering of the teachings before that it is hearing of the teachings listening paying homage approaching faith right so this is the whole chain now if we invert it it is the refine it is the re- first you have the faith for approaching if you don't have that's why buddha says faith is helpful approaching the teacher if you don't give rise to faith you won't approach the teacher right you won't approach the teacher because you have faith that's why faith is helpful so let me just re- rewind this how it happens first you have to have the faith in the realized one for his teaching second faith that he is away from the all the negative qualities second approaching approaching the teacher third paying homage paying respect fourth listening listening to the teachings fifth is hearing the teachings is helpful for remembering the teachings then remembering the teachings is helpful for reflecting the meaning remembering that's why coming back again and again to the teachings then reflecting on the meaning of the teachings then it comes acceptance of the teachings after consideration then comes enthusiasm because just understanding accepting the teachings is not you have to follow it in our practice so that enthusiasm needs to be generated then making an effort is making an effort is the next right then weighing up right and then striving so this is how the chain of the thing thing how it flows right from having the faith in the realized one to striving and making the effort so then uh, the brahmin student said you have told me preservation awakening arrival and you have also told me the things that are helpful in the arrival of the truth uh so he his this, his notion of like uh, that he said these ascetics are all fake and all that got dispelled and he said that from this day forth may master gautama remember me as a lay follower who had gone for refuge for life right so this is this is with kanki the kanki sutra it's important uh, discourse uh, that we can read and uh, remember i hope this is useful do share your thoughts in the comment section um thank you so much for watching namo buddha